much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all keys. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in all and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. Everything we can offer at Him. We sing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, and worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Come on, lift your voice. And worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. Yes, it is. Oh, 
Today, we are not on an agenda. We are on God's time, amen? I believe that God has an amazing plan for us this morning. Amen? Oh, yes. We've come to this house. We come with bondages. We've come with issues in our life. We've come with sickness. But we've come because the King is here. The King is within us. He's here in this room. And He deserves every praise that we could possibly lift up to him. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. I want us to sing that bridge one more time this morning because I believe that the words that it speaks hold a massive volume within it. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. He took stripes for our healing. He shed blood for our salvation. He rose on the third day. And I believe that he's coming back for oh, his yes, children. Amen, amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy of this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love, Jesus. welcome you to Real Hope today. We are so happy that you are here. Today is our family and friends day, and we hope that you make some new friends and maybe even some new family. Amen? But most of all, we are here to worship the Lord. We are here to celebrate what He has done, what He will do, and who He is forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Amen. My favorite thing about grace is that it is the gift that we were freely given. We did not deserve it. But we were given it freely by the hope of the world, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's a reason to be excited. And that's a reason to celebrate. And I'm so happy to be here with you. I see a lot of new faces today. And if we could just take a minute to turn and say welcome, to hug somebody, and just give a word of encouragement. Amen. Let's do yes, that.
that we could be set free, that we can live in freedom. God, regardless of our circumstances, our situation, you have made us free by the blood you shed on the cross at Calvary. God, I thank you for that grace. God, that grace that will never end, that will not let go. Lord, I give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus.
thankful this morning for his amazing grace we celebrate aloud because of what he has freed us from his grace is amazing to us father we thank you this morning god for your presence in this place god we thank you god for being here with us we thank you god for allowing us to be here god it's by your grace that we're here it's by your grace god that we are able to get up in the morning. It's by your grace, God, that we're able to do the things that we do. But most of all, it is by your grace that we are saved, God. And that's why we come today to declare your good works, Lord, through our praise and our worship to you because of the grace given to us. And we thank you for that. Come on, give him one more clap of praise this morning. Well, welcome to Real Hope can be seated for a moment and do a couple of things here. Um, 
Connor, don't go missing, buddy. I don't know where you went, but don't go missing from me. Um, welcome to Real Hope. Today is our friends and family day. And uh, so glad to see you today. So glad that you came out. And we have some great activities that's going to happen after the service. Uh, when you came in today, you were given a registration card. Uh, everyone needs to fill this out, whether you are visiting today or you're a regular and been here for a while. Um, we're using these to update our database to make sure that we have all of your information correct, your email, your telephone number, um, everything that is um, on this list that we need to, to have updated. And uh, so make sure you fill those out. And at registration today, you're going to get this and you're going to exchange this for some food tickets. And this is how we're going to get your registration cards because you can't eat food unless you have registration cards, unless you have a ticket. So we're going to exchange those, and uh, we have plenty of food, trust me. We'll have extra, I'm sure, for you to have as much as you like, but it's just our way of asking that you uh, fill this out for us. Um, when you came in this morning, you also received a, uh, a list of events and things that are happening at Real Hope. Uh, we invite you to check that out, and if you see anything in, in there that's of interest to you, come be a part of it. Uh, we have a men's breakfast that's happening November the 22nd for all the men. Be sure to be here at 730 that morning. You don't want to miss that. Also, if you are doing a community group, if you're interested in this, this is um, going to be our small groups within the church. And um, I'm asking those of you who are interested to come and be a part of that at my house November the 15th. And if you're even remotely interested and you think it might be something you like to do, if you'd like to get a group of people together at your house for a, a Bible study and fellowship to help this church grow smaller as we grow larger, then uh, come be a part of it. You don't have to make any commitments. Uh, just come and see what it's like. Because what I'm going to do is model what a small group looks like. And uh, I'm going to help teach us leaders how to do that. And so if you're interested, we need your support on that. And if you haven't already contacted me, please do so today so that I can know I've targeted a few of you. But there, I know there's some more that would like to do this in your home. Uh, you don't even have to do it at your home. You can do it at, at the church. Uh, but we'll go over all those details. All you have to do is come to the orientation, and we'll explain all that. So don't miss out on that. Uh, the food ministry, you don't want to miss that. The one harvest orders are due by November the 11th. Um, this year for Christmas, we're giving away food again. 25 food boxes at least that we're going to give to families who are in need. Real Hope is about helping people who are in need. Real Hope is about giving Jesus to people by way of giving food to people. We have a great food ministry that uh, Sadie Schultz oversees. And this year, we're going to try to give away 25 boxes. Here's how this works. If you are in need of food, or if you have a friend or someone in your community that you know would be blessed by us giving food to them, and you maybe they wouldn't even ask for food, but you look at their life and you say, man, they're really struggling right now, and, and a little a extra box of food would really help them at Christmas time, take an application, fill it out on their behalf, and as a church, Real Hope, we'd like to bless them with food. There's no cost involved. We just want to bless people. That's, that's all we want to do is just be a blessing at Christmas. Uh, they'll get a turkey or a ham, and then they'll get food. And so don't miss out on this blessing. Don't miss out on this opportunity. But the only way we can know who to help is if you tell us who to help. Because we don't want to just randomly go out. We want to help our people, and we want to help people who are connected to our people so that we can be the example that Jesus called us to be. So be involved in that. Now, today... If you are a veteran in the house, would you raise your hand? If you're a veteran in the house, you, you served in the military, you served. Now, I don't want you to stand up. I want you to be seated. Can everybody else stand up and give honor to our veterans? This week is Veterans Day week. We appreciate you for your service to our country. Thank you so much. Our freedom here is a result of your faithfulness to us. Thank you so much. We honor you this morning. We honor you this morning. If you have your tithes and your offering, you can get that out. I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning. I kind of i am going to throw Jesse and Katie a little curveball. Uh, Connor, can you come up here and take Jesse's place for a moment? Um, and uh, Jesse, you come here. While you get your tithes and offerings, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for 
giving to us, to God. Thank you for blessing the church with what you do. Uh, we can't function, we can't have days like today without your faithfulness. And we're going to be able to reach a lot of people in this community and in this service this morning uh, because you're giving, because you're faithful. Thank you for that. Today, just continue your faithful giving. Um, I want Jesse and Katie to come for just a second because here's what I just need to do. Uh, Jesse's heart's going, doo, 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 doo. what are you doing, Pastor? Um, but Jesse is called into ministry, obviously. You guys have been blessed by his ministry for over a year now uh, through his music and also through his um, uh, youth ministry that he's been doing the last few months. He's kind of stepped up to a, a new role, and uh, he's done a great job with that. But to, to further pursue, Jesse has an education at Lee University. He has a degree from there, so does Katie. And, but to further pursue Jesse's calling in ministry, uh, there's a process that has to happen, and he has to, to be licensed with the Church of God. And Jesse is a complete full company man with the Church of God. And so he is now stepping out to, to further his, um, his ministry uh, affirmation with the Church of God by taking the exhorter test that will give him a license uh, within the church of God. And as a part of that, as a church and a congregation, uh, we have to have a conference to set them forth and to agree that Jesse is uh, at the place of accountability where he can be set forth into ministry. And so um, by doing that today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them to come during our offer time right now and to stand. And I, I'd like Brother Ball and I'd like Brother Aldridge. And if you're a retired minister, minister in the house, if you could come, we're going to lay hands on them. And I'm going to ask you as a congregation, um, do you, by way of uh, applause to Jesse and Katie, honor them with this this morning for what they're doing, the step of faith? Awesome. You guys can come down here. I just want to tell you, Jesse and Katie, um, by the authority of the church of God given to me as the pastor of this church, and uh, even by the witness of these men who are great men and pastors in their life, um, we do set you forth this morning for ministry. And uh, we will stand behind you as you pursue your calling in life and what God has ordained you to do. Can you stretch your hand forth this way as our bring over our offering? We're going to pray over Jesse and Katie. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jesse and Katie. Thank you for their life, Lord. Thank you for their willingness to be committed to the ministry, Lord. God, we pray this morning blessings upon them as they continue to pursue, God, this calling on their life, Lord, by means of, of his licensing, Father. Lord, as he goes to challenge this test, pray that you give him wisdom and guidance to do so, Lord. You've placed in his heart this ministry, Lord. And we just pray this morning over them blessings, God, that you would anoint them, God, and set them forth, God to do great and mighty things in their ministry, God. Lord, the, the windows are so open for them, God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that they continue in your steps, God, in their steps of a righteous man that are ordered by the Lord, Father, that you place before Jesse and before Katie, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, this morning to anoint them as we set them forth, God, to be, Lord, ordained in this ministry of the church of God, Father. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> praise for the process. You have your tithes and offerings this morning. If you would just hold that up. Father, I pray, God, that you bless the tithe and the offering. I pray that you bless the gift and the giver. Lord, multiply it back to them a hundredfold, God, because of their faithfulness. And help us, God, to be good stewards of your finances, God, to do ministry the way you've called us to do it, Father. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. Amen. If you guys could come.
we would most certainly be in a lot of trouble if it were not for our veterans that served and gave themselves for our country. We are thankful for them. Today, turn your Bibles to John chapter 1. We're going to, to read in uh, beginning in verse 14. And we're going to talk about grace today. And the importance of grace and what it means for us in our life. I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful to be able to be here. If it were not for grace, I wouldn't be here. If it were not for grace, you wouldn't be sitting in the seat that you're in. And you may not fully understand that today, but I hope that by the time I finish this morning that you have a little better understanding of it. I like to say that when we worship, uh, like we worship with an outward expression, some people worship a little bit louder than others, some people worship a little bit more free with their hands than others, and uh, for those of, of us who at some point in time in our life, we didn't completely understand that, and maybe that's you here today, but here's how I like to explain it. If you understood what the people who are worshiping more, uh, more loudly than you and more freely than you, if you understood what God had saved them from, then you would understand why they worship the way they worship. Because when we understand what God saves us from, then it causes us to go all in and say thank you. Thank you that I have the opportunity to worship you. So we're thankful for that this morning. John chapter 1. Now this is a famous verse, book of, uh, or a couple of chapters here in John talking about Jesus, and he's referring to Jesus, and uh, we're going to start in verse 14, but when you read back through the first 13 verses, you see he's talking about Jesus in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with was word, word was with God, and the Word was God, and uh, through Him all things were made. And He's kind of bringing about this idea that that the Word of God is Jesus, and that the Word of God uh, that we know it, that we read, that we live by the the voice of God, the idea of of us uh, listening to God that is that's all coming through Jesus, His Son, and He is the the, the one that orchestrates all of this. And in verse 14, we begin reading. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, I want you to mark those words, highlight them, because we're going to talk about them a lot today. Full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of already in place of grace given already. For the law was given through Moses... Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is closest, in closest relationship with the Father, he has made him known. Jesus, who himself is God, has made God known to us. Will you lift your hands this way and pray for me as I pray for you? Father, today we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you that your word, God, is unchanging. It is ever present in our lives to help us, to build us, and to edify us. I pray for your people today that they receive this word. God, that it fall on good ground, that seed would grow, God. Lord, that you would harvest within them, Father. Lord, the word of truth that will help us, God, to edify us, Father. Help me to step aside, God, and to preach your word that only you would have them to hear, God. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, when we look at this passage of Scripture and we look at verse 16 which says grace, uh, that he has given us the grace that's already been given. When we see the English uh, translation of this, the English Standard Version, it actually says, that, that version says grace upon grace. So when you study that, 
that word grace in this scripture is a, what we call a perpetual grace. That means that it is grace that keeps going and going and going and going. And how many of you right now, as I say, going and going and going and going, are imagining the Energizer Bunny? How many of you? Raise your hand honestly. Be honest. Raise your hand. See there? It's good. Commercials work. Visual things work. It's grace that never ends. It never runs out. You never see grace laying aside, almost getting there and almost about to die because the batteries are going dead. Grace after grace after grace after grace. Every day, it's grace upon grace upon grace. And he pointed this out to let us know that, it's, that God saw us in how we were, and he knew that we would need a lot of grace. So I don't know about you, but I've needed a lot of grace in my life. There has been so many times that when grace peeked out over my life and something that I did or said or, or, or some action that I took, that I began to say, oh, and then there was grace. And I'm so thankful that his grace never runs dry, that it goes on and on and on. But there's a couple of words in this uh, scripture that I want us to look at. And he said that he came in grace. And what was the other word? Truth. Truth. Now, John is pointing out here that it was more than just grace. A lot of times for us, we look at grace and we think, oh, God's grace is sufficient to cover every sin of our life. It's, it's, we can live how we want to because of God's grace. And, and everybody on earth is just this cloud of grace is covering everybody. But John points out that Jesus came in gra- to holding almost in his hand grace and truth. Then why does he point out that it's grace and truth? Why did he not just say Jesus came with grace? Well, I want to talk about that for a few moments. And here's the first statement that I want to make that I want to, to settle in with us to remember. Is that Jesus came with grace to set us free from sin and with truth to reveal the sin in us. His grace forgives us. But his truth reveals the very sin that we have to be forgiven of. John 1.17 For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through who? Jesus Christ. See, God knows things about us and he can pull things out of us that not everybody can see. Jesus is kind of like the person that knows the unedited truth about us. He's like the person that can peel back the layers of us that not everybody gets to see down deep inside of us. See, there is a part of our life so often that we call filters. There's a part of our life that that we, as we walk around, we don't want people to see the mess that might be happening on the inside of us. But Jesus came to reveal that truth, not to just expose it to the world, but to expose it to us personally so we can see in us how we should live. That's why he came to expose the truth. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Why It's not, it's not that he wanted everybody to look at us in our sin and say, oh, you bad sinner. No, his truth is about a personal relationship with us to expose in our heart what's really going on so that our connectivity to him can be solid. Because unless we're walking in the truth, it can't be solid. And so we're so good at filters, though. We really are. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but, and, and I may have to have a place to sleep tonight after I do this, because I did not get permission for this. But we like to live in a world of filters. Here's what I mean by that. Put that uh, image up there on the screen for me, Tyler. Whenever we take a picture and we want to post it on Instagram or Facebook, or some social media site, here's what happens. Now, I don't know if this happens to you, but it happens to us. And when we take it, it has to be just right, right? Like, if it's not just right, guess what we do? We take it again. And then if the second one is not just right, guess what we do? We take it again. And we keep taking it, and we keep taking it. Why? Because we're about to expose it to the world. 
We're about to show the world this image, this little picture that we have taken. And we're about to send it out to everybody, and there's no way to retrieve it back. Once people get it, they see it, and they're exposed to the, what it is. And so we're, we, I say me, because I'm guilty of this too, a lot of times we'll put little filters over it. And you can see the different filters that happen. Oh, man, we can, we can black and white it and, you know, so that everybody doesn't see all the color. Or we can add a little bit of color. Or, or we can age it just a little bit. Or we can darken it up a little bit if we think we're too light. But we can put a filter on something that we send out to the world so that when they look at it, they say, Oh, isn't that such a beautiful picture? And I'm sure they got it right the first time, right? No. Listen, Jesus came to remove the filter from us. When we're in a relationship with him, we can't have a filter. Because he came in grace and in truth. And whatever is happening in us, God knows about it. Whatever is happening deep inside our heart, he knows what's going on. We can come in sometimes into our home or into our church and we can put on the prettiest smile that we want to. But if there's trouble in the camp of our heart, guess who knows about it? God. There is no filter that can change what's really happening in our heart. God knows the unedited truth about us and he sent his son Jesus to help us deal with that because he sent his son Jesus in grace and what? Truth. Hebrews 4.12, talking about the Word of God, Jesus Himself. And we're talking about this statement that Jesus came in grace to set us free from sin, but truth to reveal sin in us. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And is a this is the Word of God, which we refer to as Jesus, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There is nothing we can hide from Jesus. When we're in a relationship with God, everything that happens in us is revealed to Him because He is in grace and what? Truth. That's why some people reading the Word of God, it's difficult to read it in its entirety because when we get to the tough parts that challenge us, when we get to the tough parts that try to cause us to walk a little straighter line than we're walking, we want to turn the page and go over there to the positive verses. Let's just stick to the positive verses. Listen, he put it all in here, and this is the word of God. And if we don't live by this, we're not living by the truth in Jesus Christ. If you try to hide the truth of your sin or your flaws in your life, listen, here's what you do. You reject the grace of God. Oh, Pastor Grace is big enough. Yeah, but if we, if I as a person try to suppress the things that are down inside of me and I try to maintain a relationship with God without getting rid of those things in my heart and in my life, then I make the choice to reject His grace. Because His grace did not come to allow us to walk in sin and continue to walk in this. His grace came to set us free. But it's His word of truth that helps us. The word of truth. Why is truth important? Why is it important that Jesus came to help us personally deal with our truth and to deal with what's going on inside of us? Why is this important? We find it in John chapter 8. To the Jews, in verse 31, to the Jews he had beloved, who had beloved him, Jesus said this, If you hold to my teaching, which is that word of God, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and everybody knows this statement, and the truth shall set you free. Jesus was teaching them that hiding the truth doesn't help you. Hiding the truth causes you to be in bondage. Hiding the truth causes you to be in chains. And Jesus said, I have come that I can expose the truth in you, and in your relationship with God, we can deal with that truth, and you can be set free, and you can live a life of freedom. That's why he came. John chapter 3, 16. We know that verse. It's the famous verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Then as we keep moving down through those verses and we begin to study and learn 
We get to verse 21 that says, But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Jesus did not come to cover up anything in our life. I want you to understand that. He came to expose the truth in us. Why? To help us, to give us strength. What did Jesus do to the lady at the well in John chapter 4? Whenever he met with her, this lady begins to, I like to say, she put on her filter of religion, right? She put her image and her picture before Jesus, and Jesus comes to get water from the well, and she says to him, he says to her, draw me some water, and she said, you don't have anything to draw with, and he said, if you knew who I was, you'd get me some water because I can give you the living water, and she began, he begins to talk this religious talk a little bit, and she gives it right back to him, and she says, oh, the, our forefathers worshiped on this ground, and our father Jacob gave us this ground, and how can you be speaking of things? She, she thought that her little bit of, of, of knowledge of the Bible was going to be enough to, to help work Jesus out of this problem that he was dealing with, and then what did Jesus do? Jesus exposed in this personal relationship with her it was not a crowd of people around. It was him and her. He said, go get your husband. And she said, well, I don't have a husband. And he said, that's right. You've had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. You're not married to him. And what happened in that moment? Jesus kind of intersected with her to bring the truth out of her to say, listen, I know what you're dealing with. But then what did he do? He did not condemn her. What he did was said, listen, I didn't tell you that to bring condemnation, but I am the life. I am the living water, and I want to offer you that living water and help you with the truth that I've brought out of you. I'm not bringing it out of you to hurt you. I'm bringing it out of you to help you because I can also offer you grace. Grace. We're flawed. Sin entered mankind when it entered into Adam and Eve. And we're flawed. We have problems. We have issues. Sin overtakes us at times. But Jesus came to help us with that. We have things that we do that are mistakes. But here's what Jesus came to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Go back and study it when you have time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Jesus said, there, this is what he's, he's referring to this, to this woman. And he says, there is therefore, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, excuse me, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. Now that word reconciled, we're going to come back to it. That word recon reconciled means he restored this brokenness. He restored this relationship with us and Christ. All this is from God who reconciled himself through Christ. Gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling. I'm, I'm bringing this point out that Jesus came to expose the truth, but he also came to reconcile us with God. He came to restore the relationship that we have with the Father who can help us and who can lead us in the right path. Jesus came with grace to set us free from sin, but truth to reveal the sin that is in us. The second statement that I want us to think about deeply today is this. God's grace was given for us to live a life free from condemnation and sin. His grace was given for us to live a life free from condemnation and sin. Pastor, you just said that we have sin. You said Jesus brings the truth out. That's exactly right. Because unless we deal with that sin in our life, we can't have a relationship with Christ. We can't have a relationship with God. But Jesus didn't come to point us out in front of a, a crowd of people and make a spectacle of us. Jesus came into a personal relationship with us so he himself can stand right beside us into our ear and say, let me help you deal with this thing in your life. I'm here to help you. My grace is sufficient for you. He came for us to live a life free from condemnation and sin. Free from condemnation and sin. Romans 8.1 says, There is therefore... 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has what? Set you free from the law of sin and death. So not only did Jesus come to expose the truth in us, but he also came to set us free from the law of sin and death. The same man that helps us deal with our problems is the same man that helps us overcome our problems that we don't have to continue to live in them forever and ever and ever. He pulls us out of this situation. God's grace has become a lifeboat over the sea of our sinful nature. Sinful nature is what mankind is. That happened back in the first Adam. We can't change that. And so it's a reality. But His grace comes as a lifeboat to help us over that sea, that sinful sea that's around our world now. We as Christians, we as followers of Christ can get on our lifeboat and ride over that sinful nature and say, I am an overcomer. I can get over this. I don't have to fall back to this. I don't have to live a life of condemnation and I don't have to live a life of sin. Why? Because He who the Son sets free is free indeed. We don't have to keep going back. Jesus set us free. Grace sets us free from condemnation. He sets, he sets us free from the condemnation of man. There's a story in John chapter 9 and 10. It talks about this freedom. I'm going to set this little story up for you that we are at this place to where There's a man who's blind, and Jesus has healed this man. And and for us, you know, we're man, Sunday's great. We somebody gets healed on Sunday, we praise the Lord, we celebrate. But in that time of Jewish custom, if a healing healings couldn't take place on the Sabbath, because the Sabbath was the day of worship. Now here's how they believed. There were so many laws that the Sabbath had to uphold. You couldn't walk but so far. You couldn't carry a certain amount of weight. There were things that you just could not do on the Lord's day because they didn't want to do anything that would disgrace God. They said if God rested on the Sabbath day, we're going to honor him and we're going to rest. And so they had these laws put into place and all these things that they had to do on the Sabbath. And the the Pharisees in this point of John chapter 9, they had gotten to such a degree, such a point, That when you see the image that Jesus paints, it was as if they sat around with their checklist to just check off to see who was doing wrong. To just check off and say, oh, you did wrong, you have to pay. You did wrong, you have to pay the consequences. And so Jesus heals this man on the Sabbath. Now, we think, well, this is a great celebratory moment. A man was blind and now he can see. Jesus did this. We celebrate. But not the Pharisees. The Pharisees, in their legalism said, why is this man healing someone on the Sabbath? And so Jesus gets into this argument with the Pharisees who are are saying to him, you you not do, who are you anyway to come into our town and to do this thing on the Sabbath? You've broken the law. They were so focused on the law. They were so focused on these things. They said, you've broken the law, and so now you're going to have to, to, something's going to have to happen. And this was the very beginning stages of when they, the setup for the arrest of Jesus that would come at the garden right before he was to die on the cross. The the church religious leaders began to look at him and say, he's not going by the law. He's not living by the letter of the law. And yet, Jesus healed a man who was blind. And they couldn't see the, the miracle in that. They were so caught up in their legalism, they couldn't celebrate the miracle that Jesus had done for this man. And so they bring this man in, and they begin to talk to him. Now, this is, this is a pretty a remarkable story about how important Jesus is to us. And they brought this man in, and they said, they hurled insults at him. And they said, you are this fellow's disciple. You're Jesus' disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses. But as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. Now, they're talking about Jesus. And they, in their big robes and their big adorned look, are saying to this man, What have you done? 
You are deci- you're calling yourself a disciple of this man, but we're sticking to the law. We're sticking to the, to, the, to the checklist of things that people have to do. And if they don't do them, they have to pay a consequence for them. And if they don't pay the consequence, there's another penance that they have to pay. And they were so focused on this thing, they brought this man in. And here's what the man said. <laughs> he said, now that is remarkable. I can imagine this man who was blind and now he can see. He looks at these religious leaders and he said, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. Oh, how I would have loved to have been in that room. You don't know where he comes from, but he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. I can imagine that was a sarcastic statement to them at that moment. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a blind man. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this, here's what they replied to this man. This man who said, look, I am a walking miracle of what Jesus did for me, and yet you're still condemning me. You're still bringing condemnation on me. You're still saying that I didn't go by the letter of the law, and I didn't check off my list of things that I was supposed to do, and yet here I am. They were trying to accuse him of being a sinner. And here's what they said to him. You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. The very God that could save their soul was in their midst. And they were criticizing this man. Saying, you must have done something wrong. You must have been in sin. You must have been living in sin. You didn't match up to the checklist of things that you're supposed to do. We can't give you the consequence. Listen, Jesus did not come to make us pay consequence. He came to set us free from sin and condemnation. He came that we can live a life as an overcomer. Jesus came to take the stench of sin away from us. To, to release us from it. To, to set us free from this sin. Now, he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. That's what he said to the Pharisees. He said, you don't get it. You're just trying to make consequence for people's sin. I came to set them free from their sin. I came to help them be overcomers. I came to help them to be free from what they were living in. Can you imagine if today... Every one of us had to bring in an animal of sacrifice to this altar and kill it because of the sin of our family, the sin of someone connected to our family. What if that's the way it still was? Because that's, that's the way they had to do it. This would be a stinky mess. It would be a mess. I'd have my big stack over there. You'd have your big stack over there. Listen, Jesus Christ came to pay that ultimate price for our sin that we don't have to do that anymore. All we have to do is call on him and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I don't have to bring an animal to church anymore. Thank God for that. And Jesus can forgive us of our sin at that moment. Why? Because his grace is big enough to cover our sin and set us free from our sin. Grace is given to us. Jesus did not come to be our judge, but to be our Savior. John chapter 12 says this, If anyone hears my words, but does not keep them, this is Jesus speaking. He said, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. But then, he made sure they knew, there is a judge for the one who rejects me, and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them At the last day. Well, pastor, you just said living in grace is not living in condemnation. No, living with Jesus is not living in condemnation. And when you have Jesus and a relationship with him, you don't have to feel condemned because he set you free from your sin. But you have to be connected to Jesus in order for that to happen. You have to have a relationship with Jesus in order for that freedom from condemnation to take place. Because at the moment that you get connected with Jesus, you get connected with grace and truth. And his truth helps us to live a life of freedom. Truth in us. Grace was given to us to live a life of freedom from condemnation and sin. And grace, in the third statement, grace is God's love and action to the world. John, 1 John 4.10 says, this is love. 
Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Understand, we were steeped in sin ourselves. Just as they accused that man, it was true. Mankind is because of the first Adam. But the last Adam, Jesus Christ, came to set us free from that sin that started with the first Adam. That we can walk in freedom and liberty with him, not struggling with sin, not struggling with these things, but being an overcomer because of what Jesus did for us. It was God's love in action to the world. It was that moment that God said, this world needs help. They can't get it right. They can't fix their own problems. They can do nothing in their own self and their own strength. So I'm going to help them. And God the Father said to his son, go to the earth, live like a man, die like a man for the sin of mankind so they can be set free from their sin, set free from the life of condemnation, set free from the life that binds them, set free from the hand of the enemy, set free from the torment of the enemy, living in freedom. Come on, give him praise this morning. And his grace, his grace is his love and action to us through his son Jesus. That he would leave his throne in heaven where he was the ruler to come to this earth as a peasant, a servant, to be born in a manger, in a barn, to live in the home of a carpenter, to be mocked and scorned by people. He gave up his high position to come to a low position to understand how we live. To understand that it is difficult for us to get up every day and do life. To understand that the enemy is going to come in every direction, but he himself, Jesus Christ, was without sin. He was able to do what he wants us to do. We are in sin. We can't be perfect. But Jesus gave the example to live each and every day. And that's what his grace is about. It's about us being able to walk every day in freedom. Not feeling strapped. Not feeling the guilt of sin in our life. Not feeling the guilt of our past. Listen, if you're dealing with some things in your past, you haven't found grace like you need it. And today I hope that you can find that kind of grace that takes the guilt of your past and breaks it and looses you from those things. His grace was given so we can live every day above and not below. Not beat down every day. Give him praise. The author of the great song, Amazing Grace, John Newton, who himself knew troubles of sin, who himself knew troubles of death all around him, who himself had big, big, huge struggles with his parents and big struggles with his life. He knew what it was like to deal with difficult things every single day. And so he wrote this verse. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. It's grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. It's every day that you wake up and you say, how am I going to get through this day? God's grace. He covers you with His grace. He gives you strength through His grace. He cares about you through His grace. There's a sign in my home that we put up in this home. We had it in different areas of our other home. But this, one, this time we put it up on the wall big. So when everybody walks in, this is what they see. One of the first things you see when you come to my house is this, this window with this decal on it that says this. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not protect you. Wherever you are walking, His grace is covering you. Wherever you are in your life, at work, at home, whatever you're dealing with and struggling with, His grace is sufficient for you to continue on living for Him. His grace is sufficient for you. There is nothing that can overtake us 
that God's grace cannot help us get out from under. Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Man walked into our church one day. Jesse, you can come. He came in looking for help. And he said, Yeah, I need some food. And I said, Okay, I'm going to help you with some food. But before I do that, let me ask you about your life and about your heart. You know, you could see the guy was, you know, he'd been struggling a little bit. Probably a little rough around the edges. And I said, Sir, do you know Jesus? He said, I know about Jesus. I, I had to, went to Sunday school, my early childhood. I know about Jesus. When he said that, I thought about the woman at the well that knew about Jesus too, knew about religion. But I said, sir, have you ever asked Jesus to into a personal relationship? Do you, do you realize that the only way to heaven is to ask Christ to come into your heart and to, to give you new life and to forgive you of your sins? And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Have you ever done that? Have you ever asked Christ to forgive you of your sins and come into your life? And he said, sir, he put his head down. He said, unfortunately, I can't go to heaven. And I said, what? Who told you that? Why? What do you mean? And he said, well, what you don't know about me is that the reason I can't go to heaven is because I've been to prison since I've been to prison I don't think God's going to let me in heaven and I looked at that man and I said sir let me tell you something God's grace is big enough to cover any problem any sin he's big enough to reconcile anything you've ever done wrong in your life reconciliation restoration and I said, the very fact that you think you can't go to heaven because you went to prison, let me tell you about Jesus. Oh, let me tell you, when they got upset with Jesus, what they did, they imprisoned him. They bound him up. They tied him up. They put him in front of a crowd of people. They made a mockery and a spectacle out of him. They arrested him. Your Savior has went to prison. And because he went to prison and he knows what that feels like, he understands what it means for you to go to prison and he's able to forgive you of those sins in your life. We led that man to Jesus that day. Prison will not stop you from heaven. Let me tell you something. I don't know where you are or how deep you've been in it or what's happening in your heart. There is nothing too bad that my God can't forgive. Oh, but my sin is all around me, Pastor. Romans 5.20, but where sin increased, guess what else increased? Grace increased all more. Oh, but Pastor, you don't understand. Grace is for every man, according to Titus. Every man, grace is available for. No matter what we've done or what we've been through, grace is there. It's God's amazing grace. It's grace upon grace upon grace. We've all sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. We've all done things we weren't supposed to do. The Bible tells us that. That all have sinned. That our imperfections are no different than the person next to us. If you, were to, if you were to really look into the life of the person next to you, see what God saved them from, you would say, oh God, there's hope for me. What we don't see are the things that Jesus unhides in our relationship with Him. And that's that truth. 
grace is given for us. Nothing is too big. Neither height nor depth or anything else can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus through His grace. Today, I don't know where you are or what you're dealing with. Maybe what you're dealing with is not sin. Maybe what you're dealing with is hurt and pain. And maybe you've been suppressing something in your soul and in your life because you're at odds with someone else or you're in a struggling relationship and you've been pushing things deep, deep, deep and you've been trying to maintain your composure and put your filter and your mask on and your smile on and say, I understand I'm coming to church. I got to be happy. But maybe there's something in you that God needs to deal with today in His truth. Today He come to set us free from everything we're dealing with. He come today to help us. And whatever your situation is, His grace is big enough to help it. His grace is big enough. God's grace, listen to this, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. G-R-A-C-E. God's riches at Christ's expense. Jesus came to die. Jesus came for us to help us deal with the problems in our life and to set us free, that we can live a life of freedom in Christ Jesus. Will you stand to your feet this morning? Today, Jesus came with grace to set us free truth to reveal us. His grace is given for us to live a life of freedom of condemnation and sin. His grace is God's love and action to the world. We can walk in the grace of God. This morning, Jesse's going to sing this song. We're going to sing it together. But as we sing this song, I want to ask you, where you are and your walk with God. Are there some things in your life that need to be mended? Are there some things in your life that that you need to that, that if we're if God were to come right now and were to look deep into your heart because he can see it, he's a discerner of our hearts. He were to look into our heart and say, there's there's something going on in there and I want to help you with that today. Not to condemn you but to set you free. If that's you today and you know there's something that God wants to help you with, this altar is open for you. As they begin to sing, this is how we do our altar lately. We don't want to pressure. This is your place of worship. If you're dealing with something and you need to pray about it and you need God's help, you come to this front of this church and you stand or you kneel, whatever you feel led to do. Someone may come and they may pray with you just to help you. But this is a place of freedom. This is not a place of condemnation. This is a place of freedom. A place of brokenness where we can come and we can yield and we can say, God, this, I am here, God. I need your help, God. And God will meet you at this place. He'll meet you right here. He'll meet you. Courage is what God honors. So this morning, if you're dealing with it, come to this place. Come to this place and find God's grace. It's sufficient. It's big enough. It's strong enough. I don't care what you've been going through. God's bigger. I don't care what you've been dealing with. God's bigger. I don't care how bad it is every day when you wake up and you say, I can't get through this day. God's bigger than what you're dealing with. And when He brings that truth out of you and He reconnects with you, there's life. There's life. This altar is open for you. If you want to come and pray or pray with someone else, we're going to sing this song. If you're not praying, I just ask you just to sing and worship God this morning.
it's for you this morning.
say to me, Pastor, today I made a, a commitment of renewal or a first time restoration to Jesus Christ in my relationship with Him. If you say, I did that today. Either you did it at the altar or you did it in where you're sitting. And I said, God, I want to be renewed today. I've messed up. I've made some mistakes and I want you to renew me. And you feel like that your relationship has been renewed with Christ today or you've stepped out for the first time. Would you out of courage, would you lift your hand up? Lift your hand up. That's okay. Yeah, come on. That's all right. Come on. Give God praise for this this morning. You're walking in grace and freedom. It's His freedom. And I want to say to you, if you renewed your relationship with Him or if you stepped into a relationship for the first time today, I want to challenge you to take another step of water baptism. I want you to be able to get up publicly and profess to the to the congregation this is a new me walking with Jesus I'm going to give you that opportunity and if you'd like to do that I want you to talk with me and I'd like to talk with you about that be sure that you on the little card behind your seat there is a, a, a place on there where you can say I committed my life to Christ today or, or if you want to write on that little card something to, to help me it's a prayer card so that I can know how to pray with you and how to help you love to give you some materials and things that would help you. I have a little book. You come see me after church and, and I'm going to give you a little book about walking in the life of Christ because that's important for you to, to know and be discipled. Uh, if you're interested in water baptism, come and we're going to offer some water baptism so you can come following Jesus' steps. Are you thankful for His grace today? Thank God. I once was lost but now I'm found. Why? Because Jesus Christ himself came to this earth to look for me. To search and seek and save the lost. And we get to go to heaven. We get to walk in freedom because of what Christ did for us. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Amazing Grace. Let's just honor him just for a moment. We got time. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed. Riches at Christ's expense. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for being here today with our friends and family day. I'm going to give you some instruction as we come to a close on what we're going to do. All of the food is next door in the kids' building. The registration is next door in front of the kids' building. So when you leave this building, be sure to take your card. I don't have mine with me, but the card right here that you filled out, take it to registration.